consult with a mortgage professional because there's many things that, that um, need uh, massaging or, or fixing or healing, however you want to put it. There's uh, many things in a borrower's profile that take t time to heal. So if you think you're golden and then you wait till like two months before you want to buy, before you talk to someone and you find out you got pimples, we're not going to be able to get rid of those pimples in two months. But if you talk to me six months, a year, I don't mind how much, how much time. To prepare there's, never, file. there's never too early to consult to prepare. So what are, we're recording. What are some of the, um, what are some of the major uh, road bumps we are facing right now in this new market? Right. Currently in the COVID environment, our number one problem in the mortgage world is that the investors on Wall Street are shying away from any loan that has risk on it. That would be a cash out on investment properties. Renovation loans are taking a hit. Many, many lenders right now aren't even doing renovation loans. Uh, Advisors Mortgage, whom I work for, we're still doing them. But the number one thing is the credit score. Used to be able to get an FHA mortgage down to 600 without too much problem. Now your ideal FHA score is 660. We're still going down to 620, but it can get pretty ugly with the pricing, with the interest rate and the points when you have a low FICO. Again, that's one of the things that takes time to, uh, to correct. Mm -hmm. right. So when you talk about um, what the interest, what the mortgage rates are right now, so for someone in FHA world in the 600s, as opposed to someone in the conventional world with maybe a better credit score, like mm -hmm. in the sevens or eights, what are they looking for? Right. In the that's a great, that's a great question, Melina. The disparity between those two, two profiles has a never lot. been greater than it is right now. <laughs> I know. If, if, you have a, if you have a 620 credit score and you're going for an FHA mortgage, you're probably going to be in the high, high fours on the interest rate, and you may be paying a point or two points to get that interest rate. On the other hand, if you're golden, if you've been able to maintain your, your credit and you're still you're paying your bills on time and so forth, and you've got, say, a 740 credit score, but for whatever reason you need an FHA mortgage, you could be around 3 and an eighth, 3%. So you can That's still get in the threes, number. yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I've had a lot of first-time homebuyers ask me if they can still get a mortgage with just putting three and a half percent down. Is that still a possibility? That's still a possibility, yeah. FHA is the, is the three and a half percent down lender. The conventional uh, agents, uh, agencies, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, do a three percent uh, version of that, but that's, it's a lot stricter requirements to, to be able to meet, meet the uh, requirements for that loan. So just to manage expectations in this, in our health crisis right now, the market I'm, from my standpoint, we still have very serious buyers and purchases are being made and we're still very close to asking price as long as the asking price is within market value. Um, are you noticing like how long are these mortgages taking to process? Um, in the normal world, it was taking us 30 days to process these mortgages. Right. Fortunately, and I know I'm going to sound like I'm, I'm promoting my company, which I am, but it happens to also be true. We're still at 30 to 45 days on those loans. And I know some of the larger banks, they're turning away refinances because they, they just can't handle the volume that they got recently. It's still taking them 60 to 90 days on purchases. Okay, so you're still finding that the refinance market is is on the rise. Uh, I wouldn't say it's on the rise, but we had a, a, we certainly had a major thrust, a surge in applications uh, in the, in the height of the Corona event when when the market just just tanked Thanks. and the, and the interest rates dropped along with it, and there's st and there's still rates have leveled off. Uh, there's more stability in the market, but they're very low for those top tier borrowers. So if, for the, if, if a new first time home buyer was coming to you, if any home buyer was coming to you and saying, you know, Larry, should I wait to purchase a home? I'm, I'm approved. I can get a, a mortgage. Should I wait for things to get cheaper, less expensive, or should I do it now? 
Uh, for this market, Monmouth County, New Jersey, I would say don't wait. There might be other parts of the countries where it's not the same. It's not the same all over. But where we are, I'm, this is my, I'm convinced of this fact. The, in New Jersey, we're used to an exodus of new people coming from New York, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and so forth, coming into, into the, uh, the lush territory of Monmouth County. And I, I think along with this coronavirus, I think we're going to have an, exod an exodus on steroids from people from New York. I agree. I know. In a year from now, I'll be talking with a New York accent. Too. <laughs> I can tell you personally, and when I speak to my team, that we have all been saying that uh, there's been a flux of, we've had a major resurgent of new, resurgence of New York buyers. Yeah. And I would say I'm basically 80% New Yorker and 20% from New Jersey. Um, are there any things that you wish you could say to the first time home buyer today who is either getting ready to buy now or wants to prep to purchase very soon? Yeah. I, I don't know if you caught it earlier in this conversation, but the number one thing you can do as a first home home buyer is become educated and become educated early. It's never too early to, to give me a call or any mortgage professional to find out what you need to do. You may think you're already in the perfect golden spot to purchase a home, but you might be surprised. There may be something on your credit you were not aware of, and that takes time to correct. And the more time you have to prepare, the better. Awesome, I love that. Um, I, I'm gonna just add one little question because the, the first time home buyer market has suddenly used Zillow as a resource for all things. And I'm, I really have nothing really terrible to say about Zillow, not always accurate. So without having said anything to you, I get a lot of calls from first time home buyers who say, I've looked on Zillow and my mortgage will be X, Y, and Z when I plug in these numbers. How accurate okay. is Zillow for predicting what their mortgage will really be? <laughs> uh, okay. I should keep my personal opinions about Zillow off the record because I don't want a lawsuit. Truth. <laughs> okay. No, uh, here's the thing with, with, with any really, not just Zillow, but any online calculator or real estate internet search pro profile, it's, they're always going to put out super low rates because a large part of what drives them, part of their revenue is lead capture. And so if they put out the if high end of the market true. rate, yeah. if they put out the high end of the rates, people you, are right? going to shy away. People are going to shy away. So it's natural. And they, they're always quoting rates that are the top tier, those top tier borrowers. And maybe, uh, you know, there's some, there's some other things that I'm going to get into, but... I would not rely on it, honestly. I mean, you could go online and look at the big banks because they publish their rates every day. And I would use that as a barometer if you were, if you were watching for what really the rates are and use a mortgage calculator based upon those rates, not on a site that's, that's basically lead capture. Yeah. Larry, I'm seeing that before we end, I am seeing from my standpoint that um, a lot of buyers are coming in uh, thinking that they're going to get like this major deal on a house. And a lot of sellers are also fearful that this is the end, you know, we're in a strange situation. Nobody knows what's happening. But from my standpoint, again, um, these deals are staying pretty close to asking. So again, managing expectations of the first time home buyer. What are your thoughts? Are you seeing, are you seeing major deals or are you seeing really it's a, just a stabilized market rather than a crazy market? It, I mean, it's, it's really hard to tell because like you said, these are very uncertain times, but my general feeling is that before the virus came along, we were in a very red hot market. Houses were selling for asking and over, there were bidding wars. And that was due to the lack of inventory. I personally think that once this, uh, the, the virus effect, event is kind of subsiding. There's going to be so many buyers, pent up buyers, and there's going to be pent up sellers too. I think it's going to be a very hot market again. And I wouldn't go and find a steal out there. 
I mean, I think a, a deal is when you, when you can win a bid on a house. When you can win a bid oh, at, at asking or close to asking. Yeah. That, that is a steal. That's because you're typically as a buyer in the current environment, you're up against a lot of competition. And one little thing to add to that, when you're up in a market where you're up against a lot of competition, it's very important for the buyer to present themselves in the best possible way because they're likely going to be in a bidding war. And there's some, there's some things that you can do to improve that. But again, those things come with preparing early. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm hearing a lot, and I, I fear for people, a lot of buyers who are taking it upon themselves to knock on doors of off-market properties, to reach out to owners themselves. And I say to them, you need a professional. Not only is this not okay for so many levels of safety, but you add COVID to the mix. And it is a lawsuit waiting to happen to use your professionals to guide you that we are, we are truly in it because we're passionate about getting people in homes and, and just for them to truly trust the process. Right. It, it's hard when the internet just floods you with so much information. It's very empowering, but it's, it's not enough to get you to the closing table. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. Uh, I, I talk to many people, uh, FUSBOs for sale by owners, and uh, people that attempt to sell their house themselves is probably they're successful two to three percent of the time. But for most people, they very quickly understand why, while real estate professionals earn their commission. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Is there anything else that you um, feel necessary to say to our first time home buyers out there who are just looking to learn? No, actually, Melina, there's nothing else. I don't think we've left any stone unturned in this conversation. I would summarize it in this way that searching for a house is like going through the desert. There are rattlesnakes and there are sinkholes, and that's why you need the professionals to guide you because we know where those items are in a real estate process. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much, Larry, for this call. My pleasure.